I stole 40 tips and tricks from pro Stardew Valley players. Some of these are extremely helpful. So, let's get started. You can get out of bounds by spamming your weapon right over here. This will allow you to walk anywhere in the game and get to places that you would not usually be able to get to. You can then cast your fishing line right over here to get an Iridium Crobus statue on the second day in a brand new playthrough. Save all of your mixed seeds because they are essential on Ginger Island. Mixed seeds planted on Ginger Island can grow into blueberries, melons, rhubarb, and even pineapples. It is tempting to just throw away mixed seeds into the bin or sell them, but save them for Ginger Island. You can protect any machine or chest in the game by placing a chair in front of it. So you can place a chest right over here and not worry about it being destroyed by the villagers. Or you can set up a bunch of kegs like this and process wine right in the town. Plus, Pam will get to the bus earlier if you place chairs in her path to the bus station. Crab pots are really expensive to craft and they are not really worth our investment, but we need them to complete the community center. Well, not actually. You can forage for most of the items that are required for the crab pot bundle. And you can get a crab from defeating rock crabs in the regular mines, meaning you can complete the crab pot bundle without ever using a single crab pot. In a brand new playthrough, you should only purchase one of each animal so that you can focus first on completing the community center before you even set your eyes on profit. After you have donated a majority of the artifacts and minerals to Gunter, trade Omni Geodes in for treasure troves at the Desert Trader. Treasure troves can give you golden pumpkins, pearls, and all kinds of artifacts that you might be missing for the museum. If you purchase cauliflower beans and a potato seed on the first day of spring in a new playthrough, you will be able to complete the spring crops bundle by the 13th of spring. You will then get some speed grow as a reward. If you then use that speed grow on strawberries that you purchased at the egg festival, you will be able to harvest strawberries three times instead of just two. And that extra gold can go a long way. Don't underestimate the recipes that the villagers will give you when you befriend them. Linus will teach you how to make sashimi when you reach 3 hearts with him. Sashimi is pretty good because you can turn cheap fish into sashimi that sells for more. And if you get Caroline up to 2 hearts, she will teach you how to craft tea tree saplings. These are really easy to craft in the early game and you can sell them for 500 gold each. This is a really effective way to make a ton of money in the early game. Do you want an ancient fruit seed? Just smash one of these bugs in the regular mines. They have a tiny chance to drop an ancient fruit seed but since there are so many of them, it is relatively effective. This one is a good one. Take it slow. Enjoy the game. There are so many things to do in this game, but it is more fun if you don't rush it. The greenhouse is one of the best rewards from completing the community center. It will allow you to grow crops all year round and will let you place down some fruit trees that will also produce fruit all year round. But you can take it even further by placing down some garden pots with deluxe retaining soil in gaps between the trees. Then your greenhouse will be even more efficient. The volcano dungeon on Ginger Island is often overlooked as a place to farm for resources. There are actually a ton of copper, iron, and even iridium nodes in here. Grind for those resources in the volcano. Remember to bring bombs to make your life much, much easier. You can place signs on fish ponds. This will display what type of fish is in the fish pond and it will also tell you how many fish are in them as well. Do you store all of your clothing and hats in a bunch of chests somewhere in your house? Well, you don't have to. A dresser functions as a clothing storage device. You can place all kinds of clothing into a dresser and have unlimited space. Coal is a resource that we will never have enough of, so always check minecarts and those bags for coal in the mines. Each of these will reward you with 8 pieces of coal, and you will need each and every piece that you can find. 
Fishing with bait is mandatory. Fishing without bait just takes way too long. But bait can be expensive in the early game. Remember to turn your bug meat into bait. Each piece of bug meat will create 5 pieces of bait. Place furnaces at the entrance to the regular mines. That way you can leave every 5 levels to restock your furnaces and then continue on with your mine adventure. The return scepter is a very expensive item at 2 million gold. It is really expensive, but it will save you an absurd amount of time. It is a worthy investment. Never keep ostrich eggs in your fridge. If you are in the mood for an omelet and you cook one on your stove, the game will use your ostrich egg. And that will be the most rare omelet you've ever made. Wild seeds will grow into the forageable for their respective seasons. If you have a few wild seeds laying around but you are in the wrong season, you can trade your wild seeds at the desert trader for a different season. Each and every tip in this video came from one of you, so thanks! A salad only costs 220 gold. Salads are an excellent healing item and they are cheap and they heal for a decent amount. Use salads until you start producing gold quality cheese. Fences can make your farm look really good. They just tie things together nicely. If you do use fences on your farm, remember that you can place torches on your fences. It looks pretty good and no one likes walking around in the dark. This is important. You can only have one food buff active at a time, but you can also have a buff from beverages active as well. Meaning you can double stack buffs for maximum efficiency. Mix a lucky lunch with some ginger ale for a good luck buff and mix some spicy eel with coffee for an awesome speed buff. You can buy mushroom tree seeds from Mr. Key's Golden Walnut Room. These can then be placed anywhere in the game. You can plant these because they look good or you can place a tapper on them to produce some mushrooms every now and then. In the early game, pick the forester profession instead of the gatherer profession. This will allow you to get more wood per tree. I believe the gatherer profession is a better profession in the mid to late game. So it would be wise to switch professions at some point. Don't ignore the villagers. They can send you tons of stuff in the mail, from random items you didn't ask for to game-changing recipes. Just be careful when Ken sends you a bomb. In the early game, you can take a screenshot of the game and inspect the entire area looking for bubbles. Bubbles will cause you to catch many more fish than without. And it will boost your early game gold and potential fishing level. By taking a screenshot, you will save a lot of time searching for bubbles on foot. Reaching floor 10 in the volcano is critically important because it will allow you to use the forge. On your first volcano visit, ignore everything and just focus on getting to the next floor. You can also take a screenshot of the levels to know exactly where the exit is. And if you got close but failed, just reset the day. The layout will be exactly the same. Fishing is hard until it isn't. For new players, the fishing minigame might seem impossible, but it's not. Make use of a training fishing rod until you reach level 5 fishing. By then, you might be surprised at how much you have improved. And when the time comes for those legendary fish, use seafoam pudding. It will make your fishing bar so big, you cannot fail. Focus on getting batteries as early as possible. Try and craft some lightning rods before the 13th of summer and save 5 batteries. These are needed to repair the boat and get to Ginger Island. You should also build all 3 cabins even if you are playing on single player. Then make use of a controller to upgrade them in split screen. Now you can age 4 times more wine at the same time. Hops are probably one of the most profitable crops in the game, so always plant some hops in summer. Even if you don't have any cakes yet to process them, you can always store the hops in a chest somewhere. Since hops reproduce every single day, a small hops plantation can set you up for the rest of the year. Walking all the way to Pierre's store to see birthdays is tiresome, so instead buy a calendar from Robin, place it right next to your bed and check whose birthday it might be every day when you wake up. Bonus tip, place a statue of endless fortune right next to it so you have a loved gift every single day as well. 
duplicate jades using the crystallarium and then head over to the traveling merchant on Sundays to trade your jades in for staircases. You can then use these staircases in the skull cavern or you can deconstruct them for 99 stone each. Very useful tip. It is true that fences look great on your farm, but fences can decay and get destroyed over time. You could use anything else as a fence, from chests to processing machines to green tea plants. They can all work as fences. You might just need three fences so you can place down an operational gate. If it is salmon berry season, reload your game on each and every day that the berries occur. There is a strange mechanic that will cause more salmon berries to spawn on bushes if you reset the day. Strange one, but very effective. The mutant bug lair might seem pretty useless since it's only used for a quest, but you can use this entire area, fill it up with processing machines, garden pots, and chests. Make full use of that mutant bug lair. For the dark talisman quest, you will need to find some void mayonnaise to bribe the henchman to let you pass. Instead of finding void mayonnaise the legal way, just fish in the water right by the witch's hut. You will eventually get some void mayo. You can get giant crops by planting pumpkins, cauliflowers, or melons in a 3x3 grid like this. If you do get a giant crop, you do not need to harvest these. They will not die when the season changes. They will stay on your farm forever. Nice. Between the 12th and 14th of summer, there will be tremendously more forageables on the beach. This is also known as crab mating season. Enjoy those extra corals. Play with your significant other, then you can grow your farm and your relationship at the same time. I just find this entry is so cute. Processing your crops into wine is an easy way to make more money, but the quality of your crops doesn't matter when processing them. You could sell the higher quality crops for immediate profit and then process the lower quality crops. Use a sprinkler to keep the balls in your slime hutch full forever. Now you don't need to come and check on them every day. Just pitch up once a week and collect all of the slime sacks for profit. Dinosaur eggs are rare, and when you do finally find one, do not donate it to Gunther at the museum. Just drop it into the egg incubator in your coop. Before you know it, you will have your very own dinosaur, and they will lay eggs, meaning you will have an infinite amount of eggs. Easy money. Rabbits are the best coop animal in the game. They produce rabbit's feet, and rabbit's feet is a loved gift by every villager in the game except for one. Plus, it is possible to get high quality rabbit's feet, and that will allow you to befriend the villagers even faster. And those are all of the tips you guys have left for us. Thank you so much to anyone who posted. You literally made this video. But for now, I will see you in the next video.